this uh, Shivalik webinar series. Uh, today we have a speaker from uh, University of Punjab, Muhammad Akbar Khan. Uh, he'll be talking about mammalian paleontology of the Shivalik spot for Plato, Pakistan. So, Akbar has done, uh, you know, he started collecting fossils from Shivalik uh, from 1998, uh, since we, when he was a MSc student. Of the geology, of the zoology department at the University of Punjab. Uh, he completed his PhD in 2007 from the same university and had been collaborating with the, you know, faculty members and researchers from Crete University of Greece and giant department as a curator in 2007. So we welcome you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we have the next speaker in this series from India. Uh, Bob will be introducing uh, some of the potential speakers, some of whom are already scheduled, whether the others are all, uh, you know, just uh, not scheduled, but they have committed to uh, give away their talks. So I'll now let Bob to take the program further. Bob, uh, Great. Yep. Take, it, take it away. Uh, Thank you, Irfan. And uh, I want to uh, acknowledge up front uh, the, the help of Mukhyar uh, Ghani, who's uh, with the GSP in Quetta because really the uh, coordination of this uh, uh, webinar series uh, and the Microsoft Teams uh, management is happening from Muktiar in uh, Quetta. So we're very grateful to the GSP for, for hosting us. Uh, before I introduce this evening's speaker, I just want to look into the future a little bit. We've got a variety of, of uh, programs coming your way. Again, the same uh, time. Uh, this is uh, 9.30 a.m. in Pakistan. And it's uh, different times in different places around the world. But our next week, our speaker is going to be uh, Dr. Rajiv Patnaik from uh, Punjab University in Chandigarh. And uh, the following week is going to be Peter Clift uh, from Louisiana State University. Uh, the following week is going to be Andrew Meigs. That's going to be 21 April. Uh, will be Andrew Meigs from Oregon State University. And then the following week is Kay Berensmeyer uh, from the Smithsonian. And uh, Kay's talk will be on the 28th of uh, April. That's uh, Pakistan time, uh, subcontinent time. And then uh, going even further forward, we've got uh, Jason Head from Cambridge. Uh, we've got Turi Serling from uh, Utah. We've got uh, Lisa Taux from California. Uh, Yanni Najman, uh, who's actually currently here in the United States. And uh, Peter Zeitler. Uh, and then a, a couple of few other people who have not yet been scheduled. So we anticipate that this uh, seminar series will continue through the month of May and into June. And uh, we actually don't really see an end. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what that means, but but we'll we'll see. Uh, but I want to uh, take the opportunity tonight to introduce uh, Muhammad Akbar Khan from Punjab University in, in Lahore. And uh, he is a paleontologist, and tonight's talk will be on paleontology on fossils, as will uh, the following talk uh, next week. Uh, Akbar Khan has published ex very extensively on the uh, fossils of the Shawaliks, uh, a, a list of publications in excess of 170. Uh, he's supervised a, a wide variety of PhD theses, over a dozen and uh, over 50 master's theses. So it's, it's wonderful to have a, a professor who is uh, not only doing his research and, and publishing copious uh, materials, but also uh, helping students and supporting students. So uh, without any further ado, I want to uh, turn the floor over to uh, Dr. Akbar Khan. Thank you. So we're, we're seeing, uh, we've got this, this, it's not yet in presenter mode. We see four or five slides on the left and the central slide in the middle. There you go, it looks beautiful. It's okay. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yay, thank you. Hey everybody. And uh, thanks Bob 
Irfan and Gadi for providing the such colorful activity to combine the paleontologist in this platform. I am happy to talk about mammalian paleontology of the Swalik Putwar Plateau, Pakistan. As far as my lab concerned, paleontological work began here in the early 1960s. Dr. Abu Bakr, the first academic Pakistani paleontologist who laid foundation of the paleontological work at the University of the Punjab in Pakistan. He worked on Prudentia and carnivora fossils. Later on, Dr. Server and Dr. Akhtar, student of Dr. Abu Bakr, collected comprehensive fossils from Pakistan to Pakistan and some area of Al Kashmir. In 2015, we established Dr. Abu Bakr Fossil Display and Research Center after the name of Dr. Abu Bakr in the Zoology Department, University of the Punjab, and placed identical fossils in this center. Since then, we collect fossils regularly, and currently, we have more than 100,000 fossils in the center. We regularly visit the fossil sites of the Potwar Plateau, and every month, the fossil display center is furnished with new fossils of the mammalian groups collected from Potwar Plateau of Pakistan. The main recorded mammalian groups are artiodactyles, periseodactyles, proboscideans, rodents, carnivores, and primates. More than 20 PhD students have completed their PhD on the Swalik mammals of Potwar Plateau in this center. Here, Putwar Plateau is an elevated area in the Punjab province covering mainly Jhelum, Chikwal, Miawali, and Attic districts. It has been divided into three parts, Northern Potwar Plateau, Southern and Eastern Potwar Plateau. Actual Northern and Southern Potwar Plateaus are well studied, while the Eastern part is less explored. Among the explored areas, the northern part includes the Dogtan and Khar areas. Southern one includes Nagri, Chinji, Kanhati, and western side include the Throat, Hasnot, Kotalkand, Marhal of the Jhelum district. And eastern side include the eastern side of the Jhelum district, including Rotas and surrounding areas. Putwar Plateau outcrafts are best for the fossil collection because they comprise variety of fossils aggregated because of erosion. There is a complete sequence of 18 to 6 million years old sediments, and the most extant mammalian order represent their ancestor in the Swalik Potawar Plateau. This one, the uh, generalized map of Potawar Plateau with simplified stratigraphic column. Uh, here you can see the major localities we visited in the Potawar Plateau. The map indicates the sites present in the Jhelum, Chikwal, and Attic districts. Other sites visited by our team are present in Gujarat, Pashab, Rawalpindi, and We also visited area of Azad Kashmir that are not shown in this map. The visited site in the district attic are present in the Khar area and include Kulialkas, Yogi Mera, Dog Mila, and Kot Malayar. Kalyalkas and Yogi Mera are in the Dogtan formation. Dog Mila and Kot Malyar belong to the Nagri formation. The visited sites in the Chikwal district are Dogtan, Naragi, Chinji, Kotera, Bilomar, Kadarpur, Rakhvasnal, Sethi Nagri, Khokharzer, and Dogban Amirkhtom. The fossil localities, Chinji, Kotera, Bilomar, Kadarpur, Rakhvasnal and Dogban Mirkton represent the Chinji formation or crops. However, some areas under 
under the administration of Kadarpur has Nagri formation outcrops. An area of around about 10 kilometer under the administration of Chinji, Kutaira, Bilomar, and Kadarpur form the Chinji formation stratotype. City Nagri and Kokharze represent Nagri formation outcrops. Kokharze especially represents almost all the formation of the Siwali groups. Doktan and Naragi have sediments of Doktan formation. Both these constitute the Doktan formation stratotype. The visited locality in district Jhelum are Hasnot, Padri, Bandar, Tatrot, Kotalkund, Fadial, Diyal, Chabar Sajda, Bakrala, Rityal, and Kurla Sharif. Hasnot, Padri have predominantly Doktan formation outcrops. The throat and kotal cone predominantly the throat outcrops of swamp formation. Fadial, Dial, Chabar Saida, Bakrala, and Rityal have Chinji formation outcrops, and Kurla Sharif have Panjur sediments of swamp formation. The oldest formation of the Swali group is the uh, Kamlial formation. It is named after the village Cambrial, located in the Attic district of Potawar Plateau. This formation represents the limited funnel elements, and most elements are fragmentary in nature. Much of these represent basal elements of the mammalian orders. For example, you can see uh, Protonarchistingiensis, Gomphotherium baronai, and uh, in the next slide, you can see the coral of Adam Corvetis. We uh, have collected paratype horn core of Siva Ceres gradients from the Kamlial formation. Some dental elements of Protonanchis, Chingiensis, Comphotherium baronai, and Coral of Adan Cargetis also reported from this formation. Protonanchis Chingiensis, in which lower molars are characterized by the pseudo anencoidy content and represent abundant cementation, whereas uh, in Gomphotherium baronai, there are prominent sulcus and pre-trite median sulcus, smaller mesoconvolutes and extremely low quantity of cement. These are the specimens collected from the Kamlial formation belong to Coral of Odan Corrugatis, and they belong to the dentary and some fragmentary tusk. Molar of this species are extremely tychodont and uh, chirodontic with pronounced chevronic structure, abundant cementation, rugose enamel, and lack of pseudo anencoidy trend. Rhinoceros, rhinos collected from the Kamlial formation, including Elicornox Campylanitum. We have collected a low dentition as well as upper dentition. <laughs> that reported dentition belongs to Elicornox Campylanitum. Hesik uh, reported this species on the name of Chylotherium Intermediate Campylanitum on the base of some element of uh, appendicular skeleton, Elicornops capillanitum was formally recognized in the layer of Doktan formation under the specific name Chylotherium intermedium capillanitum. Chylotherium intermedium was established only a second molar, upper molar, from the lower swallow of Sindh. And it further divided, has it, uh, in 1972, divided Chylotherium intermediate into two subspecies, Chylotherium intermedium, intermedium, with a restricted distribution in the Chinji and Nagri formations, and Chylotherium intermediate compilinatum in the layer of the Doktan formation. Guring has also mentioned the presence of Serotherium affinity alicornops in the base of the Doktan formation. Uh, this one was the first occurrence of alicornops from the Kamlial formation. Another 
large genera of rhinoceratoid reported from the Camellia formation is Brachypotherium. Brachypotherium, large sized to middle Miocene rhinoceratoids. Very large species of the genus with relatively high cheek teeth. Colbert recognized a Ceratherium perimens from the lower and middle swallow sediments, while Hessig placed the species in Brachypotherium. Hessig in 1972 reported Brachypotherium in the Camellia formation of the lower swallow subgroup. Sardino sand described fossil remains of Brachypotherium perimens from the Miocene or Major formation in Sindh. Morphology is similar to those described by has from the Swalik of Pakistan. Other post are similar to older age of the Manchur formation with respect to the later specimen that belong to the middle and upper portion of Chinji, Nagri, and Okhtar formations. The difference of the dental remaining size may also be attributed to the age difference of animal. Brachypotherium perimens is the most frequent species in time transition and it is rare during most humid and most arid times. Change formation. Uh, we have reported periseroductiles, audioductiles, proboscidean, carnivora, creodonts, rodentia, and primates from this formation. The funnel elements include myotragocerus, tragopotics, elekistocerus, halicoportics, Bocellafini, Gazilla, Giraffocarix, Giraffa, Microbionodon Potamus, Ponoha, Isothelium. The Bovitex are the most pre predominant in this formation and provide the evidence of small and medium sized bovids. Among the artiodactyles, ruminants are abundant within the family bovidae that is well diversified. Tragulid and giraffids are also well diversified. Among the tragulids, darka therium, darka bune are reported. Uh, however, recently we have reported CMO tragulus from this formation, and there may be presence of F tragulus. Giraffids have re currently recognized two species. Giraffa Carex pinabiensis and Giraffa priscilla. Prolibatherium exigua are rare species restricted to the Chinji formation. Other artiodactyles like suvids are also numerous with Proctamochiris, Conohyes, and Listiodont. There is a, a reassessment of Listiodont material is ongoing to on the basis of dental size and morphological variation. Among pistodactyles, Rhinoceratoids are dominant with Gandotherium and Brachypotherium. Among rare elements, Aspenotherium is present. Carnivores and Creodonts are also rare. Creodont, only one or two genera reported. Primates are rare, and remains of Sivapithecus have been recognized from this formation. Proboscidean, diverse like carnivores, including Dinotherium, Conobilodon, Protonencus, along with well known Comphotherium and Chirolophodon. The skull of Myotragocerus gallotinum is reported from the Achinji formation. The skull shows the characteristics of the Myotragocerus. Myotragocerus is actually known from several middle Miocene localities of the Swale group. Pilgrim named the genus Strepsiportix and the species Strepsiportix gluten from the middle Miocene of the Swalix. Later on in 1970, Gentry synonymized it to Protragocerus. And Salonius integrated Protragocerus proto, gluten into Myotragocerus gluten. In 1902, Akhtar documented a new species, Myotragocerus doctanensis, from the doctan formation, which was synonymized to Tragopartis brownii. More recently, we erected Myotragocerus large species from the doctan type locality of the doctan formation. In the Swalix, Myotragocerus appeared first time in the middle Miocene age, 
and its diversification was going to at the end of the Miocene. They are going to be extinct at the end of Miocene from the Siwaliks. These uh, specimens belong to Siamatragulus and Siamatragulus SP1 and SP2. Uh, uh, I have already told that these are reported recently. Uh, already this genus is not reported from the Siwalix. The genus Siamatragulus was erected by Thomas in 1990 based on the material from the Middle Miocene of Thailand. The material included a partial skull with the maxillary mandible and some post cranial elements. A recent survey in the long neglected middle Miocene site, Chabar Saizda, has produced the fossil remains which show Siamal Tragulus morphology. Among these, an upper molar and uh, upper molar and a lower molar, uh, which are extremely small and based on some differences, have been attributed to a new species, Siamal Tragulus sp1 denoting to third species of the genus from the middle Miocene. Four other species are also show the characteristic of the genus. However, they are extremely larger than any known Siamatragula species and include only lower dentition. These have been attributed to Siamatragula species and this one is four species of the from the middle Siwalis. Cloud horses, like with ears, these uh, uh, specimens are also collected from the Chinji formation. These specimens collected from the four localities of the Chinji formation, like Dopan, Mirkton, Nava, Avasal, and Kanhati. Clicothiers, fascinating and distinctive periceptile with low crowned cheek teeth and having claws rather than hooves. However, they have no modern analog. Kilikothiers mains are found in Eurasia, Africa, and North America, even into Panama. However, fossils of Kilikothiers are rare, typically comprising only a small part of any fossil collection. Kilikothiers are very rare in the world, and this is equally true for the Siwale Kilikothiers. The most comprehensive work on the Siwale Kilikothier was done by Pickford in 1982, listing 70 specimens from the Siwaliks. Later, Server and author described two specimens, and one specimen have been described by me in 2009. So far, total 73 specimens of Colicotheus have been described from the Siwaliks. Most of them are postcranial elements, and the dental means are only 30 specimens. The absolute number and uh, solitary habit may be attributed to the Siwalik Colicotheus, as the specimen described here have been collected from the full locality of the Chinji formation, and we have only a few specimens overall belong to Colicotheus. Bunolophodont suets belong to listed on group, and these specimens are also collected from the Chinji formation of the uh, Suvalix. Listed on similar in size in listed on some plantains of Eurasia, but in which the upper central incisor are shorter and smaller, the upper canine shorter and narrower. First premolar, rudimentary, and a large talon on the third molar. All lophodont pigs are placed in a single genus. This structure is called lophodont in which cusps are modified into plates, and this structure is only found in the uh, in case of pigs, this is uh, found in Listodon. All Lufodon pigs are placed in a single genus, Listodon, that consists of three species and is known from the middle Miocene of the Sioux From the, the genus, Listodon is known by three species Listodon pantopotamia, Listodon theobaldi, and Listodon guptai. Listodon theobaldi is much smaller than Listodon pantopotamia, Pickford placed all the middle Miocene Swalik Lophodon peaks in Listodon Pentopotami, which is characterized the smallest and primitive switches of the genus Listodon. Listodon Pentopotami is stratigraphically fairly long range species extending from the base of the lower Swalik to the lower portion of the middle Swalik. Giraffid specimens belong to uh, Giraffa Carex pinabiensis and Giraffa pericilla. Here you can see the specimens of Giraffa Carex pinabiensis 
giraffe calyx we have it is actually medium size giraffe with four horns this one depicted the four horns one two at the anterior extremity of the frontals and uh, two on the front operator region teeth are brachydont with rugosa nom enamel in the other like the other genera of giraffe did Giraffocarex nubiens is very close to Giraffa pericilla in size. The external four parastyles are comparatively more developed in the premolar of Giraffa nubiens, which can be observed in the steady premolars. The stylet and menier ribs are less pronounced in the steady specimen. Giraffocarex was founded by Pilgrim in 1910 on the genotype, genotype Giraffocarex nubiens. The genus and species have been from from the Siwalix of Pakistan and India. and it is also reported from turkey the collection consisted of skull cranial fragments mandibular fragments and many isolated teeth from the nagri formation of the middle swalex as well as the chingi formation of the lower swalex giraffe carex is a primitive species and considered an ancestral species to giraffe proboscidean proboscides are common in the chingi formation these specimens belong to the proboscidean type called dinotherium and we have collected the premolar and molars from the chingi formations dinotheria fossils no assigned to prodinotherium are known from the northwest part of the indian subcontinent to be precise from the lucky hills of seen bhutti hills in balochistan and salt range in attic however a large dinotheria species of the subcontinent that is dinotherium indicum was far more widespread reaching up to nepal in the east of pima island india the dentition size is almost same in all dentition species uh, dinotherium species their transverse ridges are parallel and equal size the valley between them is large and uh, everywhere equally wide there are differences in the shape of horizontal ramus articular process coronoid process and the tusk there is still a debate on the morphology and functional character and lifestyle of dinotheria so the comparative study and analysis of post cranial skeleton is necessary length of the long bone of limbs indicate the similarity with the modern proboscida but these limbs are heavy and bulky especially that of the foam and crust nagri formation provides brachypotherium haparian pachypotex cynopotex darkatherium darkabium sivapithecus and so many early late miocene mammals the bowed are the most predominant in this formation but brachypotherium haparian uh, listed on regulate and giraffid fossils are approximately as common as each other at the type locality pachypotex darkabium mitragocerus and gazella seem to be uniformly rare at setinagri in this formation we have first haparian appearance of large size bovid like Sphenopotex and Pachypotex last occurrence of listed on Giraffa carex and Giraffa pericilla diversity and abundance of Sphenopithecus in this formation and there is the presence of Myotragocerus rare occurrence of Dinotherium in Pakistan is also put from this formation this slide show how we mark the collection site for example first uh, in we mark the collection area within a country that is put over plateau then uh, uh, the mark the study locality within a district from the district chakwal we mark city nagri with other associated localities then again mark the survey area for example you can see e and d actually this is the survey area and from the uh, next we mark um, the geological yeah. 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 webinar Sivapithecus fossils are also reported from the Nagri formation. Fossil hominids have been reported from the Siwalik sequence of Indo-Pakistan for more than 100 years. During this time, more than 25 species and 11 genera have been named, and their taxonomy have been repeatedly revised. Sivapithecus specimens are 
Uh, reported from the Potawar Plateau of Pakistan, most specimens come from three precisely dated intervals separated by temporal gaps of approximately 0.7 to 1 million years. The Chinji Formation Homonite bearing locality range between 12.7 to 11.4 million years ago. All Potawar specimens collected earlier in the 20th century, whose location is simply noted as Chinji. The YGSP 311 locality lies within the Upper Nagri Formation, dated to 10.1 million years ago, which is uh, al allocated exactly for Sivapithecus specimens. The U central level present within the Doktan and Nagri Formation. These two formations are time transgressive, so specimens from the upper level of the Nagri Formation may be contemporaneous with the specimen, the lowest part of the Doktan Formation. These specimens are collected from the upper portion of the Nagri formation. As I have already told that Haparian first appeared in the Nagri formation, we have Haparian Nagri and Cis Haparian sp small and civil hippus species. Civil hippus species include uh, civil hippus Nagri and civil hippus perimens, civil hippus theobaldi. These specimens are uh, categorized based on the uh, Enamel applications, here you can see the frequency of enamel applications, and these specimens are also identified based on the shape of the protocon. For example, you can see the shape of the protocon orbit in this form, there is some, but, and the plicablin. Plicablin may be bifid and trifid in this species. The earliest occurrence of the swallic aparium that can be determined with some certain local aparium dentum almost 10.7 to 10.8 million years ago. The civil hippus lineage is distinguished at its origin from other early old word lineage, in particular by the early onset of maximum crown height of more than 65 millimeter. Mandibular cheek teeth remain rather primitive in civil hippus nagliansis. Doftan mammalian fauna include artioductiles, carnivores, rodentias, Sarcopithecite, proboscidean, and pseudoductiles. The fauna is dominant by artioductiles, especially bovids. Other than artioductiles, the other uh, mammalian groups are also found. Dominant bovid species are Gazilla laticri, Tagopartics, Punjabiensis, and Pachypartics, Latidan. Smallest non bovid species, Elicistocetus, is also relatively more in number as compared to the Nagri formation. Other bovid species include Selenoportix, Vexillarius, Selenoportix, Ladicris, Pachyportix, Nagrai, Tragoportix, and Tragoportix retidon, which is a controversial status. Among Tragoid, which is second after bovids, genus Darkatherium is dominant over Siamat Tragulus and Ephra Tragulus. This formation has largest Siamat Tragulus species of the Swalik. Darkavian is also present with the few remains. Large giraffe like Brahmatherium are, are present. Pseudoductiles are dominated by Haparians. Proboscidean are diverse in this formation Pyrolophodon, Conobilodon, Prod, Anencus, Stegolophodon, Stegodon are appeared. Carnivore represent Mestilids and Hynids. Sivapithecus became extinct at the course of this formation, and some extinct genera of rodents also appeared. Pachypartix latitan is also a large size bovid. It is reported from the Doctrine formation, as well as the base of the throat formation. The middle swallic is represented by two species of Pachypartix. A large size is Pachypartix latidans, and a small size is Pachypartix vinegari. Pachypartis uh, latitan although have been continuously present from the middle swallex to upper swallex sequence, but it is more abundant in the snout succession, which is the upper part of the Doctrine formation. Pachypartis have been recovered from the late Miocene of middle swallex and from the early Pliocene of the upper swallex. A large size of it, Brahmatherium current, we have recovered these specimens from the Doktan formation. It is a large species, considered considerably larger than Brahmatherium megacephalum, but otherwise similar to it. 
cheek teeth are large and heavy with rugose enamel you can see the teeth size and also rugosity is very clear in these specimens the taxonomy and validity of the swalic giraffe have not been fully settled ladic in 1876 described the genus cedaspatherium further collection of this genus was done by pilgrim in 1910 matthew in 1929 colbert in 1935 then but 2004 and uh, by other pakistani paleontologists in 2007 and 10 these collections comprise cranial and post cranial elements they identified four species namely hedaspatherium megacephalum hedaspatherium grant hedaspatherium magnum and hedaspatherium birmanicum however there is much variation in the swalic giraffe dentition and the earlier research did not consider the variability of the species owing to incomplete information as the spectrum of intraspecific variability in the swalic giraffe is large so we synonymized hedaspatherium with bramatherium Matthew in 1929 and Colbert in 1935 already proposed close affinity between Bramatherium grand and Bramatherium magnum. Moreover, both species are restricted to the dorsal formation. However, further fossil material is needed to test this hypothesis of synonym. Colobine monkey. are also collected from a snow succession of the dorsal formation in uh, typical colobine model the cusps are tall and have steep slopes and oriented near to the buccal and lingual margin of the crown the buccal and lingual pair of cusps are connected you can see in these specimens this geometry means that colobines have longer molar crest than cercopithecines and third the molar crown exhibit less flare the maxillary third molar is often smaller than the other upper molars owing to a reduction in the size of the distal lobe this one the swalic mesopithecus fossils are some of the most mysterious representatives of the genus because they are very fragmentary with the remains consisting mostly of isolated teeth and jaw fragments and because many of the fossils were collected in the late 19th century and lack detailed locality information the long history of recovery of colobine fossils since the late 19th century from the swalic has made for a complex history of classification these fossils were assigned to mesopithecus sivalensis which differ from mesopithecus pentelicus primarily in its smaller size The swallow colobine fossils, including the new snow specimen, represent the modern cercopithecoid primates in Asia. They are significant because before the end of the Miocene, they came to occupy some area previously occupied by hominids such as Sibapithecus. In Rodentia, we collected uh, three types. My Myorhizomys, Erizomyides, and Hystrix. Sometimes these are collected from the dorsal formation, as well as Hystrix is collected from the, the throat formation of uh, throat zone of swamp formation. Myorhizomys is related to living bamboo rhyde, and therefore exhibit the fossorial characteristic of crown group, adapting the digging habit. having the chisel like incisor and deep dentaries the chisel like lower incisor of myrizomys and later rhizomeni is deep anterior posteriorly show flattening of the enamel and smooth without a median ridge rhizomides sivalensis it is medium size to large with moderate hypsodonty high crowned in early wear rhizomides have a long range and are not a member of the crown bamboo rat the genus does not display the array of strongly fossorial trait evident in myrhizomys for example the dentary is much shallower than in rhizomine its mesentery crest differ greatly from that of myzerai the lower part is inflated and extend anteriorly beyond the upper crest 
His tricks, the molar from the throat is somewhat polished by abrasion and the enamel is pitted by exposure. This one is reported from the throat formation. Identification as his trick is based on the multiple enamel lobe. You can see the enamel lobe in this uh, molar. Remnants of two small buccal roots are also evident. This molar belongs to the large size, similar to parcopine, previously found in the late Miocene of Pakistan. Swamp formation, uh, we have collected specimens uh, of uh, proboscideans, large size bovids, and uh, deers from this formation. The throat and panjo zones are produce brilliant remains from the outcrop nearby the throat will, village. And the pubby hills like Purla Shri, Panjan Shetsana, and cluster of other localities being built also included in the swamp formation. An incursive analysis is reported from this formation, the late Pliocene deposit of the throat formation represent only a single species of an incursive analysis. Incisive tusks are very long, almost straight and slender, and distinguish an incurs from other proboscideans. The radius of curvature of the shrieker lines is constant and the angle is acute. The tusk is very long, almost straight and slender, lightly curved upward, distally having length more than 11 feet. It is one of the best preserved tusks of the Siwalik. The tusk is broken at the tip of the anterior end, which has been reconstructed with the cementing material. The exact missing part of the tusk is not known, but it may be 11 centimeter. There are at least 37 first order increments in the tusk, implying that the minimum age of the animal was at least 37 years at death. The horn cores of bison sequence is also reported from the throat outcrops of the swamp formation. Horn cores are moderately long, weakly arced without double flexion, are twisting, inserted posterior laterally and curved firstly upward and recurved inward at their tips. Traces of posterior keel are present proximally. Horn cores are rather slender and decrease gradually in diameter toward the tip. Their basal cross-section is subcircular to ovate. A medial longitudinal groove is also present near the tip of the horn core. Bicense valences was reported until now from upper Pliocene, lower Pleistocene sediment, not older than 2.2 million years ago. If indeed the new material is correctly attributed to this species, it might recommend a longer chronological range as it originated from early middle Pliocene section of the throat of the Persuale, dated approximately between 3.2 to 2.6 million years ago. Therefore, bison surveillance record in Pakistan could span from early middle Pliocene up to early Pleistocene, modifying previous concepts. Pubby hills. Pubby hills actually uh, flank the southeast bank of Jhelum River as a gentle anticline, having total thickness almost uh, 1,000 meter. We have already collected the locality, uh, studied the locality Sardo, Bimber, and the other localities near Mandi Bahaudin. This one uh, newly discovered locality is Panjanchahana, which is situated in the Pabi Hills. This area is located five kilometers east of the Changes locality visited by Wine in 1875, and six kilometers east of the Rasul locality visited by Pilgrim in 1913, and 15 kilometers southwest of Sadok village. Both these localities are extension of the famous Pabi Hills of Karyan, studied by Wine in 1875, Pilgrim 1913, and Kalarata 1977, Opdaik 1979, and Daniel 2008. Much of the area of Panjim is heavily disturbed because of reduced vegetation, which results in exposure to rainwash and extreme origin. This, along with the tectonic and human activity has resulted 
in a bad land topography. In the locality, the base is not exposed. Lithological, there are the soft coarse nature sandstone, the brown tint of sandstone and clays, and there is an abundance of pebble bed. From the Pubby Hills, as proboscidean, we have collected uh, elephas, elephant ED, and dent, and uh, stegodon fossils. The tusk, in, in case of elephant ID and dead, the tusk is broken proximally. The tusk is slightly laterally and merely compressed, gradually tapering distally. Its cross section is oval. The total length of the tusk on the outer surface is almost 187 centimeter, more than six feet. The original length would be more than this because approximately 45 centimeter was broken. The tusk is distinguished from an incursive lenses as Gomphotheria reported from the throat formation in leaking the longitudinal groove, which produces the typical piriform section of Gomphotheria tusk. The tusk is slightly curved upward. Tip is very sharp, unlike in an incursive lenses, which has extremely straight tusk with narrow and round tips, and also has an enamel covering. Second specimens are collected as Stegodon uh, penjorensis. These are upper grinding teeth, having superior size, much more numerous, ridge crest, and progressive hypsodonty. The proboscidean genus Stegodon is fairly abundant in Pleistocene locality across Asia, including India, Pakistan, however, Stegodon are much less common in African site. These specimens are collected recently, and uh, we have published recently this pre Senno Megasiris Bakri, a new species after the name of Dr. Abu Bakr. This is the first record of pre Senno Megasiris in the uh, geological past of the Indian subcontinent. Unlike pre Senno Megasiris from the late Miocene of Central Asia, the Swalik farm is characterized by the loss of basal tine formation and dimension number of crown ramifications. However, the new Swalik server man maintains the characteristic of pre seno megaceres general enteral bioplan. The enteral shape of the new species from Pakistan re reveals important evolutionary changes in ecology. Enterers of pre seno megaceres from Pakistan have lost their function of social display and return to the effective weapon enteral type. The multivariate cluster analysis of enteral characters support the close evolutionary relationship of the new server species from the Swali with pre Cenomegaceres and Cenomegaceres from the Pleistocene of Asia. The earliest occurrence of server main in the upper Swalik deposit marks the beginning of the Panjol formation, coincide with the arrival of Hemibas and Equus in the Indian subcontinent, and apparently is a part of large paleobiogeography event. Only four server species from Swalix are based on a two server means, that is service simplicidens, service sivalensis, service colobiality, and meta servoceris pinabiensis. The systematic position is clear only for meta servoceris pinabiensis, the only Swalix server species based on the partially preserved skull with complete antlers. Service simplicidens, service sivalensis, and service colberti are based on the dental and cranial remains, and their generic attribution is still unclear. The well preserved enter remains from the Swalik indicate the presence of rue service panolia in the Punjab formation, and both these genera still persist in the modern fauna of the Indian subcontinent. This one. Uh, select few groups to show the uh, distribution along the Swalik formations. One of them is uh, Swalik regular distribution. Swalik regular distribution, as you can see, uh, Dark Ethereum uh, minimus is only reported Chinji formation. Dark Ethereum minus have uh, long range reported from Chinji Dogton. Nagri formation, whereas Dark Ethereum Nagrai is also a specific distribution, Dark Abion and Thracothide. A few uh, fossils are reported but have a long range. 
same darker view on Nagarai also uh, restricted formation. Dark Ethereum will be uh, very restricted extent and many form that actually are included into genus will be taken out of it. Uh, dark Ethereum is considered as a paraphyletic bag where many fossils have been thrown into with very little clear. And it is a really problem with the swallowing regular fossils. So a deep morphological reassessment of the swallowing regularity is a need of time as dark Ethereum is being more related to dark Ethereum than to other regulars. This one show the swallowing server distribution. Uh, here you can see a service triply dense in early Pliocene, then service Sirvati. Also reported from the early Pliocene. Late in late Pliocene, there is reduced service simplicity dense. There is a range of service equivalences from late Pliocene, early Pleistocene, and middle Pleistocene. Then a late Pleistocene reported service genic color. Service species also reported from early Pleistocene to late Pleistocene, but the more specimen required to identify is the red jacket five. A new service uh, species also reported from early Pleistocene to middle Pleistocene. Their meta service Punjabi NCs and meta service species, Penolia, are also reported from the Sivalix. Please know Mega Saris Bakri has uh, reported from the Pabri Hills. This coexisted with the meta service as Punjabi NCs. And the presence of pre and omega stresses in the paleontology part of the Swalik recommend paleo biogeography exchange with Central Asia, triggered by the increase of climate aridity and seasonality on the Indian subcontinent. This would show the uh, Swalik Renaissance rarity distribution. Uh, we have a number of uh, species. Uh, Renaissance to start with from Camellial formation. For example, in Camellial formation, you can see Elicornops, Brachypotherium, and uh, in Gingy formation, so many species are reported, whereas Nagri formation also. Uh, Brachypotherium, Gandatherium, Verdali, Elicornops, Complanatum, Chylotherium, Intermedium, Brachypotherium, Fatherium, the NC. And in case of Doctron formation, uh, the uh, uh, Rhinoceros sivalensis, Elponops, Brachypotherium, Rhinoceros affinity sivalensis, and Brachypotherium, Fertigendiensis. And swamp formation uh, included Rhinoceros sivalensis, whereas in Pabbi Hills we can report the Sundaicus, Rhinoceros, Punjabi Therium, Retin Rhinoceros, Unicornis. The Rhinoceros fauna in Pakistan is abundant and diverse, and distribution among three distinct biogeographic regions. For example, Bukti Hills in Balochistan, Manchur Formation in Sindh, and the Swaliks in northern India. During the pre swalik period, Epicelatherium was recorded in the early Oligocene of central Balochistan. And the um, Brachydus went into the Indian subcontinent about 21 million years ago. The contemporaneous presence of Eprodon in Kazakhstan, Pakistan, China at both sides of Himalaya and the Upper Plateau evidence that both ranges played a minimized role in the distribution and dispersal of rhinoceratids between Asia and the subcontinent throughout the Oligocene. The fauna of South Asia has probably been distinct originally since before the beginning of the Miocene. The Swalik fauna maintained a certain resemblance to the modern fauna of Southeast Asia. The Swaliks have provided lineage leading to characteristic high diversity of rhinoceros, different from those of Eurasia and Africa. So, we have collected uh, mammalian remains include primates, in artioductiles, pseudoductiles, carnivores, proboscidean, rodents, and creodonts. In addition to mammalian remains, remains of other vertebrates, some Invertebrates also have been reported. Among the artioductiles, bovids are dominant. Among the pseudoductiles, equids are dominant. And among the carnivores, hinids are dominant. So, in the past, the age of the most holotypes and paratypes are assigned initially because of the incomplete locality information. 
सो आई नीड ऑफ कलेबरेटिंग वर्क मंग रिसर्च इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू कलेबरेट द एग्जेक्ट स्ट्रेटोग्राफिक पोजिशन ऑफ द ममेलियन स्पीशीज थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेंशन एंड फॉर गिविंग मी योर टाइम Thank you very much, uh, Professor Edward. Let's let's see if perhaps there are some questions. Maybe uh, Mukhtar, uh, your phone. You can see if there's some questions. Uh, if if someone uh, want to ask question, please raise your hand. So so. Uh, I, I'll ask a question. I, I see uh, Catherine's got a question too, but let, let me just ask a little bit about your collecting uh, circumstances. Are, are most of these fossils found in, as isolated uh, surface occurrences, or do you have quarries where you're finding uh, concentrations of bone? Sorry. Uh, so, so my my question was about the uh, the occurrence of the fossils. Are you finding many of them as isolated surface occurrences, or do you actually have places where you can quarry for bone beds or concentrations of fossils? Uh, yes, uh, we uh, visiting the sites uh, uh, as uh, uh, which are already reported then we move here and there from here we collected the cranial and post cranial elements uh, combinedly collectively but uh, as uh, for specific identification we mainly focus on the dentition yeah thank you so yeah we, we have we, a question from rajiv uh, patnak please uh can you hear me yes yes, yes. Okay, really okay okay thank you thank you uh, dr khan it was a wonderful talk uh, i really enjoyed <clears throat> uh, of course i have never had the uh, opportunity to visit uh, <clears throat> pakistan but uh, i i hope in future i'll get a, a chance because it's a wonderful uh, i i mean of course when we talk of yeah. shivalik it's it's uh, it's potwar and other places uh my my uh, question is uh, that we in fact uh, what we do in india we look for pseudo conglomerates uh, it's like uh, it's kind of continuation of uh, bob's question in fact uh, we we uh, we uh, sort of uh, search for pseudo conglomerates first with some some uh, bony stuff then we uh, we go around and uh, uh, kind of uh, spend time there I, is it is it the case is the same case there uh yes uh, we also have uh, seen if there is a pseudo conglomerates uh, as well as if there is a maximum erosion uh, around the outcrops then we will focus and definitely we uh, continue towards the bone beds and uh, then select the uh, specific uh, site right right so uh, pseudo conglomerates as as i understand it's uh, usually a little bit higher energy uh, regime and you would uh, often get uh, broken uh, i mean uh, disarticulated stuff so uh, are there places where you get bigger i mean uh, part of the skeleton uh, like uh, i mean uh, articulated stuff uh like uh, uh like the skull or or any post cranial material uh, uh you have collected that are uh, uh, that belong to a different sort of species it's a, it's a very unfortunate uh, uh, in overall potwar plateau it's hard to find out the articulated stuff uh we have skull uh, skull maybe without horn cores we have horn cores horn core maybe without skull as uh, in my presentation i uh, speak about the uh, tusk of an ankus this is one of the complete specimen otherwise most of the specimens are uh, disarticulated right right thank you thank you so much okay. you are welcome so we we have a question from katherine <clears throat> 
Thank you very much, Akbar. That was very impressive. It was fascinating to see all those beautiful fossils. My question is about the diversity, the number of species that occur together. I'm curious whether you, you and your coworkers have been able to count up all the species that are occurring in the same time period to see how diversity has changed over time. Yeah. Uh, for example, when we uh, move uh, toward Kamlial and Chinji formation, in Kamlial formation, we have very rare uh, types, I mean, rare species. But when we move toward the Chinji formation, uh, we have a cluster of species. And as compared to the Nagri formation, in Nagri formation, there is a comparatively less species as compared to Chinji as well as Dokhtan formation. And same case is with the Tatrod formation. When we move toward the Tatrod formation, we have a large size mammals, but their diversification uh, would be uh, small. And when we move toward the Pubby Hills in the uh, top of the swamp formation, there uh, is also a rare uh, types, mean species, but the mammals having a big size. Thank you. One other question too. Have you and your group been able to do any screen washing for small mammals? I know you reported on rhizomyids. Um, have you, did you collect those yourselves and were those, was that from screen washing or surface collecting? Uh, no, uh, my team is not uh, go to screen washing. We just uh, pick mm -hmm. the big size, mm -hmm. the big size mammals. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, we, we have a question from Jekar. Yeah. Dr. Khan, thank you for your talk. It was really great to see all of those uh, great fossils there. I had questions about the dating that you're using there. Are you uh, conducting new transects and doing fresh paleomagnetic dating, or are you uh, going to purely rely on some of the older dates that we have for existing uh, transects? And are you exploring new sites or are you exploring pre-existing localities uh, that have been dated in the past? No, oh, thank you. Uh, this one uh, is the shortcoming in my lab. Uh, actually, we uh, totally uh, uh, rely on the old literature, uh, the old uh, reported literature uh, regarding the sites because uh, my team uh, exactly uh, expertise on the identification of fossils and most of the new localities for example in uh, uh, recent week uh, Panjian locality reported from the public hills then we move towards the other experts and uh, on the basis of simple cross section, we identify its seed but as exactly which is uh, nowadays definitely established uh, precisely paleomagnetism. Actually, it is uh, not possible for me here, but we collaboratively, and we are searching for this collaboration to collaboratively do this as a precise dating about the swallow fossils. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I think there is no more questions from, from the audience. Uh, Bob? Well, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, everybody, for participating this evening. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity for us to, uh, because we, we have uh, our speaker for next week is, is with us this evening. So, uh, so <laughs> we've had a chance to meet uh, Rajiv Hatniak uh, in advance. But uh, next week, we'll, we will follow up uh, this discussion with additional details about uh, paleontology uh, as seen from, uh, from India. So uh, yep. the, uh, the fossils don't know the borders are there, and it'll be interesting to hear uh, our story next week. So we'll, we'll look forward to uh, following up on, on this discussion. And uh, thank you again very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah. For your, your work. Very, very nice. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.